Imagine walking through the British countryside, or even the Australian bush, or even the Adirondack Mountains of New York, enjoying the fresh air, the sun, and the sounds of nature all around you. When you spot something in the distance, moving slowly as if it's aware that you are there, it's staring at you, sizing you up. It is long, cat-like, with black or tan fur, and large, eyes yellow, staring straight through you. Just your mere presence disturbed whatever it was doing before, and then it darts off. You tell yourself, what you just seen was definitely a cat, but it is strange because in those parts of the world, a cat like that is not native. Alien big cats are also known as phantom cats. These aren't your typical stray or domestic house cat, no. These are large cats in places they have not roamed in thousands of years. Large cats such as leopards, jaguars, tigers, lions, and cougars, which supposedly are sighted in regions outside their indigenous range. Hence the term alien. So for those of you hoping for a spaceship filled with furry cuteness, sorry, this isn't that video. Nope. In this, we are going to discuss human attacks, sightings, livestock deaths, and in one case, the military getting involved. This is a huge topic as they are seen all over the globe, so I decided to limit it to only a handful of places, Australia, the UK, and the US, as well as focus on three cases, the Blue Mountains Panther in Australia, the Beast of Exmoor, and the Beast of Bodmin Moor in the UK, and Pumas in New York State, as well as talk about natural things like how jaguars are found in the US from time to time. I really hope you like cats, because this is all all about the big ones. Out of all the scary animals in Australia, big cats are not one of them. In fact, the closest was the Queensland tiger or the thylacine, which were both marsupials. But there is a story worth telling about Australia and large cats, because they have been spotted. In the Gippsland region of Victoria, Australia, there were legends of cougars. In World War II, Australian airmen found some cougars somewhere and decided to make them mascots. I don't know where they found cougars. Anyways, the Australian government told these airmen that they could not keep the large cats, so they let them out in the wild. This seems to be a trend we will see throughout this, of the stories and sightings originating with someone being stupid and letting a large cat go in a habitat that is not suited for them. Cougars, though, are highly adaptable. They live in deserts, mountains, plains, cold regions, and Texas. Another sighting of a large cat in Australia was a Grampian's Puma, which a study at Deakin University found to be inconclusive that there was a cougar living in the Grampian's Mountain area. Another is a black large feline living in the Blue Mountains. Before I begin this, I need to do a little science. There is no cat called a black panther. Black panthers are lepers and jaguars. It is caused by melanistic traits in the animal that causes their fur to just be black instead of spotted. So when I talk about large black cats, just know I am not talking about cougars, lions, or tigers. Cougars lack the melanistic traits in their DNA. Oh, and melanism in tigers and lions is not definite. Now to the Blue Mountains Panther. In 20 years, there have been over 500 sightings of a black, large feline. Whether that is a jaguar or leopard, it's really hard to know. What is known is that during the summer, the panther migrates into the mountains, while in the winter, it stalks livestock in the Gross Vale area. And it isn't only sheep and goats it stalks. 
In 2002, a teenager had suffered severe lacerations to his body in an attack by the creature. The New South Wales Department of Primary Industries had reports done on these attacks to see if they can figure out what it was that was attacking livestock and even people. These reports were in 1999, 2003, 2009, and 2013. Dr. Johannes Bauer reported in 1999 that it is most likely true that there is a panther stalking the area. What ended up happening is that the Department of Agriculture only sent out one officer and a German Shepherd. The 2003 report suggested that there was no conclusive evidence that a panther was stalking the area. In 2005, Bill Atkinson, a technical manager at the Agricultural Department, told newspapers that he was instructed not to speak on the subject, which is very sketchy. If there was a big cat out there, the public deserves to know. The report from 2009, though, concluded that the existence of a big cat population was more likely than not. But here's the fun, fun, fun part. Before that report was released to the public, it was edited to change the conclusion, which screams someone is hiding something. Then finally, the 2013 report stated that there is no invasive species in the Blue Mountains area. Which makes you wonder because the report from 2009 was edited. Did the person who did the 2013 report conclude that there was nothing there in the Blue Mountains to appease their bosses? Who knows? The theory is that the Blue Mountains Panther was a descendant of those mascots from World War II. But unless they had a jaguar or leopard, then that would be impossible because melanistic cougars do not exist. By the way, I am not an expert, but I do read a lot, and I'm pretty sure that unless science discovers a melanistic cougar, they do not exist. But hell, I really don't think Australia needs murder, Tigger. They already have enough things that want to kill you, including the most venomous reptiles, spiders, and fish on Earth. Oh, and venomous mammals. Before I leave Australia for the UK, a reminder, everything in Australia wants to kill you. Now on to the UK. So, in the UK in the 1960s, there was a huge boom in exotic pets. For some reason, British society thought that having certain types of cats were trendy. It's not. Domesticated animals are one thing. Large cats, canines, and other animals are another. Apparently, people were keeping venomous snakes as pets. That's just dumb! So in 1976, a law was passed that banned these types of morons from owning exotic pets. The Dangerous Wild Animals Acts of 1976 was meant that the common person without licenses or permits could not own dangerous animals. So what do you think that some people decided to do with dangerous animals that they were keeping? If you guessed drive to the countryside and just let them go free, you deserve a cookie. Now is it certain that's what happened? No. But it is really interesting that during the 70s and 80s there was an uptick on sightings of large felines. Mostly of the black variety, which is most prized in the exotic pet trade. There were sightings of big cats before that, but this is when a lot more people saw big cats. In 1988 and 1989, two different large cats were hit by cars. In 1991, a lynx was killed in Norwich. In 1994, on the Isle of Wight, a leopard was killed after it attacked chickens and ducks. In 2001, a female Eurasian lynx was spotted in a schoolyard in North London. It was captured alive and then sent to the London Zoo. The lynx was only 18 months old. Mary Chipperfield might have caused at least a couple of the sightings I am going to talk about in the next chapter. She owned a zoo in Plymouth. In 1978, the zoo was shuttered and went out of business. She had five cougars, including a breeding pair. She arranged for them to be moved to Dartmoor Wildlife Park. When they arrived, there were only two. At first, she stated that the other three escaped, but then she broke down and said that she loved those three too much and decided to let them free in the moors. And soon after, the beast of Bodmin Moor was spotted. Soon after 1978, mutilated livestock began popping up all over Bodmin Moor. The culprit is said to have been a leopard-like black cat. So Mary Chipperfield maybe is in the clear. She released cougars, unless they were misidentified as black and leopard-like. Mostly because cougars can be dark brown and it could look like they're black. There have been only 60 sightings of this cat, supposedly 3 to 5 feet long and sporting white-yellow eyes. The sightings and the livestock mutilations were enough to get an investigation in 19. 
1995. The report found that there was no evidence of a large cat in Bodmin Moor. That was until a boy found a leopard skull on the banks of the Fowey River, measuring about four inches long and seven inches wide. The skull lacked the lower jaw, but it was obvious that it was a feline. So it was sent to be tested to make sure that it was authentic. It was a real skull, but turns out it was from a leopard skin rug. There were marks on it indicating that it had been skinned. In 1997, more mutilations of livestock happened and photos were captured, including this one, which is allegedly a pregnant jaguar. While this is all interesting, Bodmin Moor is not as interesting as the time the British military ended up staking out a moor for a beast. In 1983, in the span of three months, Eric Lee had lost over 100 sheep. A beast was seen in the area, dipping its paw into the river as if fishing. The beast was large, four feet six inches long, two feet tall, standing low to the ground and yet able to jump over a six foot fence with ease. The coloration on the cat varies from witness testimony. Some say black, some say tan, others say dark gray. This thing is still photographed today and attacks happen even to people. In 2000, Josh Hopkins was attacked when he was 11 years old. While walking on a country road, Josh Hopkins spotted a cat. Not sure what to make of it, he walked forwards hesitantly. Startled, the large cat jumped and slashed at his face, but then ran off. Back in 1983, the Royal Marines were called into the area. The attacks on livestock were enough to send in soldiers to try to kill the beast. What they found was nothing. Just fleeting glimpse of a large creature that they had no idea what it was. The Marines claimed to see the beast but did not attack out of fear of accidentally hitting livestock. The commanding officer stated, Our quarry behaved with high, almost human intelligence and always moved with surrounding cover amongst the hedges and woods. The Marines were recalled but as explained before, it didn't stop the sightings or the slaughter of livestock. Before I get into big cats spotted in the US, I'm going to say the reason why I'm not going to cover the South. Jaguars. Yes, jaguars have been spotted in the US as far north as South Carolina. They are mostly found in Texas and parts of Arizona, but jaguars have been coming up more north since the beginning of the 21st century. Also in Texas, there are a lot of tigers. I am not kidding, there are tigers in Texas. All of them are captive, but that is a scary thought if someone were to release a bunch of tigers into Texas. In June 2011, a cougar was hit and killed in Connecticut. It was killed on the Wilbur Park Crossway. Now, cougars haven't been around the northeastern United States for a while. The eastern cougar was declared extinct in 1946. The one killed actually wasn't from the area. It had migrated there somehow from Minnesota. DNA tests confirmed it was a western cougar. There's a thought that the western cougar is migrating east, taking up lands that once belonged to the eastern cougar. This mostly has to do with habitat loss, because humans bulldoze their homes to build Walmarts. In the forests of Delaware since 1990, pumas, or cougars if you prefer, have been spotted. It is believed that the cougars spotted in Delaware are specimens that have either escaped from or released from captivity. Massachusetts also is a place where pumas have been spotted. By the way, get used to me using cougars and pumas. I have a bad habit of using both. Sorry if it gets confusing. Just know that I'm talking about the same animal. A large cat that mews and purrs. Unlike any other large cat, by the way. In 2002 in Hawaii, big cat have been spotted on the island of Maui. In Kahlua, a big cat that is either a leopard, jaguar, or cougar has been spotted. Wildlife experts theorized that it was a pet that someone released. Experts tried to capture the cat, only to fail. A sample of the fur that was found was sent for DNA testing and was inconclusive. Hawaii's hunt for the large cat ended in November of 2003 after no sightings were reported in three weeks. That is just some, but I want to focus on one state, the state of New York where the residents of upstate New York will tell you cougars roam the forests. I live in New York. I'm not going to tell you where, but my home state is New York. A lot of people for some reason think that New York is just a city. No, we have hills, valleys, rivers, one of the largest national parks in the country, and also a lot of wildlife. Black bears, coyotes, foxes, and bobcats. 
what we do not have and haven't had for a long time are cougars. A Mennonite woman invited her two sisters to her home one winter's afternoon. The three were talking in the kitchen when the woman happened to look out the window. At the edge of a hayfield in the woman's Benton, New York property, she spotted a large black creature walking, looking at the ground as if hoping to stir up a small animal to make a meal out of. She watched it as it slowly moved, a long and large body about the size of a black lab. The creature lifted its head, looking at the home as if it was knowing that there was something looking back at it. What they saw was a large black cat. The next day, the woman's father came to the home and in the chill of a cold day, went to the spot that his daughter said she saw a large black cat. He was skeptical till he saw the tracks the tracks of a large cat. This story is from this article. It is a true story reported in the press. There have been sightings in the Adirondacks, Catskills, Finger Lakes, and near the Hudson River. And where there are sightings, there are hoaxers. I found this in the Hudson Post. Someone took this photo, but it turns out that it was a cutout placed there to look like a puma was caught on camera. But the Department of Environmental Conservation has gotten reports of puma sightings, and they take it very seriously. If a puma is spotted in New York, they investigate. Hell, their page on the New York State website has a special page just about this. Here's what it reads. While DEC receives several reports of cougar sightings each year, it is mostly cases of mistaken identity of other animals. Cougars are commonly mistaken for wild bobcats, fishers, and coyotes, as well as domestic house cats and dogs. If you believe you have seen a cougar, check for tracks, scat, and other signs that may have been left by the animal and take photographs of these signs. If possible, photograph the animal. When taking photographs of tracks, please include an object of known size, such as a quarter or ruler, next to the track. Placing a can or bucket over the tracks may help preserve them until they can be examined by DEC wildlife staff. For helpful information on identifying mountain lion tracks and more, visit the Missouri Department of Conservation Mountain Lion Signs webpage. Submit your photographs and findings to DEC via the contact information at the right of this page. Yep, that's right. New York State is too lazy to go over signs of pumas for their site, so they just linked the Missouri DEC site. I have personally not seen one, but living in upstate New York, I have heard a lot of stories, including one from my own father-in-law, who swears he saw one off the side of the highway. Yeah, it's a source of argument because he saw it out of the corner of his eye going 65 miles per hour, but I do think that pumas could be in New York. Pumas are highly adaptable, and though the eastern puma is extinct in New York, they said the same about black bears, and they slowly began migrating back into the southern parts of the state. So I do not see why the puma couldn't. Maybe a small population lives deep in the forests, and in the Catskills and Adirondack Mountains. But it's just my opinion. Let me know what you think. I am pretty sure that this is the only cryptid that can be explained really easily. First, let's start by misidentification of known animals. In the case of the beasts of Exmoor, hard to tell how large the cat really is in the pictures. Let's look at it again, because there is nothing in the foreground or background that could allow a trained person to estimate the length and height of the creature. It could be as small as a house cat. And let's talk about house cats. They are made to live in homes, not as strays in the wild. Over time, they go feral. An offspring of these feral cats can get pretty large, about the size of a small dog. They get so large because they are mostly hunting and destroying the ecosystem. Because stupid people will just drop them off in the wild instead of taking them to be rehomed. Sorry, anyone who abandons animals are pieces of shit. Anyways, this is one of the theories for the Beast of Exmoor. Another contender is the Scottish Wildcat. Found in Scotland, they are not that big, but they are not common in Britain also. But sometimes, they are spotted in the British countryside. Other misidentifications seem more ridiculous, mostly wolves, foxes, and coyotes, which I am pretty sure that most people can tell the difference between a canine and a feline, though I do think my father-in-law saw a coyote. But in fairness as to why I think that, he was going 65 miles per hour down a highway and only saw it out of the corner of his eye. 
I honestly think the simplest explanation is the right one. That it is either people abandoning these large cats to the countryside because of, one, they got too big to handle, or two, they had them illegally. Or that they are merely escaped animals from zoos and circuses. Take the case of Felicity. In 1980, in the Scottish Highlands, a puma was spotted, and hunters were sent out to trap it. They did, and they didn't harm the puma. They found that this puma was actually very tame. It liked to be petted. It loved to be tickled. It mewed and purred. It was very friendly. For several years, farmers were afraid of it, though seeing it from the distance. They ended up naming her Felicity. She is theorized to have been abandoned on the highlands, which is sad because apparently from all that I've read, she was really friendly and just wanted to be loved. She was sent to Highland Wildlife Park where she spent the remainder of her life. And after she passed, she was stuffed and put on display in the Iverness Museum. So to wrap this up, I think that ABCs are the result of people trying to own a large cat, then either abandoning the cat in the wild or the cat escaping, with a healthy dose of cats escaping from zoos and circuses. Most people who want these types of exotic pets always want a specific type, Black Panthers being one of the more popular. I also think that migration due to habitat loss from humans wrecking their environment is a possibility when it comes to the U.S. So we could chalk this up to humans ruining the planet for every other animal. Damn, what a bummer. Anyways, here's a tiger playing with a ball. Next week in our look into cryptids, we go to Point Pleasant, West Virginia, where the glowing red eyes of a monster with wings terrified those who saw it in 1966 and 1967, with sightings culminating in the collapse of a bridge. Next week, Mothman. Till then.